Now then crew and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now I've been working with spark plugs for many many years and um, I've still never got round to learning what all the numbers and letters mean on the, well I use NGK spark plugs, so how to decipher the code, you know BPR6ES or whatever it is, what does that really mean? Because each letter and each number does have a very significant meaning. And sometimes, you know, you need a spark plug for your car that's, got an, that's a non-resistor type, or you might have to have one that's a, that's a resistor type. And you want to make sure that the guy selling them over the counter is giving you the right ones. So, I did a bit of research, and I found online, on the NGK spark plug website, a really cool little table to help you to, you know, decipher that code. And I thought I'd do a few of the a few of the spark plugs that I've got kicking around the workshop with you to give you an idea of how to use this chart. Hopefully, it's going to be helpful to a few. And I'm sure there will be a lots of comments on this down the bottom. So if you read those as well, um, you know it'll give you more information. I'm sure about these different types of spark plugs and why they all vary a little bit for each application. And there's a lot more spark plugs out there now than there ever used to be because there's so many specialist applications. So I thought the first one that I'd, I'd pick up is, and they're all like my spark plug draw, is this one here, look. It's a CR6HSA. And I looked at that and go, well, okay, well, I know that the 6 is a heat range, but that's pretty much all that I know. Oh, it's got an R in it as well, which means it's a resistor. But let's do this properly so we know what it all means. Right, let's head down to the bench. Actually... I'm just thinking, actually, before I started to film using the sheet, you know, on the bench, which you can probably hardly read, I thought, hey, I've got some screen capture software. So I'll use that on the laptop, and we'll go through a few different plugs. And I've got, I've actually got quite a selection here. So we've got a, there's another one, look, and another one. So I'll read them out as I'm going through the screen capture, you know, on the laptop, and I'll talk you through how to work out each one and there are there's there's a few exceptions to the rule as well I've noticed um, but this is uh, you know a journey that uh, or a learning curve that I'm really keen to get my head around because you know I deal with spark plugs on a regular basis and it's it'd be good to be able to interpret and have a good idea of what those numbers and letters mean right it's going to dig out my laptop right so the first plug is what was it a CR 6 HSA. So what does that mean? Okay, well, the first letter can be a B or a C or a D and so on. And we look down this table here and C tells us that it's a 10 millimeter thread, it's got a 1 millimeter pitch, and the socket size to fit that spark plug should be 16 millimeters. Well, that was easy enough. Okay, well, the next letter is an R. Well, I know what that is. R stands for a resistor type spark plug, and it could be any of these here, look. So we've got M for compact, L for short type, P for protected center electrode insulator, obviously R for resistor, U for surface or semi-surface discharge, and a Z, inductive suppressor. I've never seen one with a Z. Hmm. Okay, what's next? Well, it's a number. And it's a number six. And now that's got to do with the heat range. Most people know the heat range. One thing to bear in mind is the lower the number, the hotter the plug temperature. And the higher the number, the cooler it is. Very important not to get that mixed up. As Benjamin found out with his DT. <laughs> Hold the piston, poor lad. Okay, now the next letter is a H. So we need to look down here for H. And that tells us the length of the plug, the threads that go into the cylinder head, how, how long those threads are. Now, the next letter, as it is on here, is an S. And the S stands for nickel, non-V-grooved, centre electrode. So it's nickel plated. And the last number we've got, or the last letter, is an A. And that A stands for a special design. You can see down here, look. A, B, D, etc. Special designs. So that's very specific to the application. Well, 
that's that one done, isn't it? It wasn't too difficult. But this table is really helpful to try and work these out. Okay, so let's just choose another one. Uh, let's have a little look, see what we've got. Right, how about CPR7EA-9? That sounds complicated. Right, let's have a look. So, starting off again, C, well we've already done C before, so that's 10 mil thread, 1 mil pitch, 16 mil socket size. Now, the P stands for a protected center electrode insulator. Really? Let's have a little look. Well, that's the spark plug. Okay. Well, I don't know. I can't see any kind of additional protection. It looks like a normal spark plug to me, but it is quite long, isn't it, on the threads? So we'll come to that in a minute. Okay, so P covers the protected center electrode insulator and then we've got the old R so it's also got the R which means it's a resistor type spark plug so this one is a slightly cooler spark plug than the previous one this is a number seven and then we've got an E so the E stands for the thread reach of 90 millimeters and to confirm the thread reach is this length here from from there right down to here so that in this case is about 19 millimeters yeah from there to there right what else have we got uh, okay so it's got an A on the end so that means it's a special design again and then it's got a dash and a number nine well this example up here has got an 11 on the end so we'll follow that little line down and that tells us that if it's got a 9, it's already got a preset plug gap of 0 0.9 millimeters. Now that might not necessarily be correct for your application, but it means it's come out of the factory with a preset plug gap. So this plug gap here between the two electrodes is 0 0.9 millimeters. Just there, look. Yeah, easy. And you can check it with a feeler gauge. That's not hard. That's on plenty of my videos. Okay, let's do one more. For a third spark plug then, just for an example, let's go for the CR9E model, I suppose. Right, so that's what it looks like. Again, quite a small thread size. So, thread size C. Uh, again, we've got the 10 millimeter um, diameter, 1 mil pet pitch, and a 16 mil socket size. Now, the next one is the R, so it's got a resistor again, and the 9 is the heat range. This plug is quite a bit cooler than the previous ones we've been looking at, and it's got an E on the end, which means its thread reach is 19 mil. So that was actually quite an easy spark plug to do. Excellent. And you'll need to set the plug gap yourself because it's not preset at the factory. Okay, spark plugs all over the place now. Let's do one more before I bore you to death. What have we got? So this is a DR8EA. Oh, and it's a used one. Excellent. Okay. DR8EA. So D will give us a 12 millimeter thread diameter. So it's a bit bigger than the than the last one. So 12 mil thread diameter, and it's got a pitch of 1.25 millimeters. And the socket size to go on here is an 18 millimeter socket. And you should always use a proper spark plug socket because it's got the uh, rubber sheath to hold it in place. Okay, what else have we got? So it's a, uh, R is the next letter. So it's again, it's a resistor type plug like most plugs are these days. And it's number eight on the heat range. So it's somewhere about in the middle really, isn't it? And E, which means again, it's got a 19 mil thread reach across here, down into the head. And the last one is A for apple. And that means it's of a special design. Here you go. Pretty easy, isn't it? So there you go. I've got spark plugs all over my workshop now. <laughs> Bit of a tidy up required. But that little chart there was really, really helpful. And what I'll do is I'll put a link to, uh, to where I got that from off the internet a bit further down so you can actually download that chart yourself and keep it somewhere safe because man, it's actually very informative. There was a couple of things that I couldn't work out how to decipher. 
that's going to be work in progress. I think I had one plug which was a uh, what was it? Where was it? It was a D DCP. So somebody can tell us what that means. Yeah, that one there. I think it was DCP R8E. Now obviously the R8E is easy, and the D is easy, but the CP something to do with ISO standard. It says here if it was a if it was a BCP, not a DCP, the height from the gasket to the top terminal is 50.5 millimeters on a BK type spark plug. Hmm. Which is 2.5 millimeters shorter than a BCP type. That's a note. All right, so a BCP will be 53 millimeters by the looks of it. Anyway, yeah, all good. I'm sure you know. Still learning. Okay, well, if you found this video helpful, why not click on the subscribe button? You'll see a little gear icon turn up. Click on the gear icon, and then you can tick the box, and our friends down at YouTube will send you an email as and when I upload any new videos. You'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google+, and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. However, first point of contact, if you don't mind, through the comments on YouTube, because I'm always on YouTube. I'm always here. <laughs> There's also a new Patreon page. You can drop onto that, and it covers a bit of the history about the channel and where it's heading in the future. And if you fancy making a donation, you can do that via that Patreon page too. All right, crew. Well, until next time, I'll see you around. Cheers. I'll run out.